Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. finally on um i had a problem tonight and uh you know I i'll tell you something i uh really don't enjoy uh having to do uh business with uh, some guy in india all right but anyway we had some uh, problems with our internet connection and so on and so forth and i figured i would at least come on for a short time now and uh and uh, do whatever. I, what happened was is that all of a sudden I noticed something happened today. And all of a sudden I noticed that my Wi-Fi in the house wasn't working. And, and so I had to check the Wi-Fi to see why it wasn't working. And I couldn't figure it out. So then I called Fios. And I finally decided to just close the whole show down because I had to get this thing solved. And um, I got some guy in India. All right. Hello, sir. What can I do for you? And, and I couldn't understand a word he was saying, but eventually uh, we got all my uh, my stuff back online. And in fact, if I if I look, uh, I probably will be able to find that I'm uh, able to get all my yeah. There it is. There's there's there it is. There it's they're all slowly coming up. There we go. Ah, jeez, you know. So anyway, uh, so I figured I'd just come on here. And we just uh, try and do some kind of a show. And look, I don't even have my hat on, and I got a haircut today too. So uh, let me uh, uh, let me just turn myself on here, make myself active. And if you want to call, uh, we would love to uh, we would love to hear from you. Uh, let me see here. Uh, if any of you are even paying attention now, uh, but I I had to get this problem solved otherwise I wasn't going to be able to do a show uh, with uh, a part of my system being on the fritz so anyway hello there how are you so if anybody wants to call uh, uh, you know probably everybody's given up on me tonight uh, and um, that's okay that's all right oh wait a minute here comes Josh Wheeler he's calling okay wait a minute hold on a second I've got a uh, let me see here. Let me let me first go here and say hello to Josh. Hello, Josh. Are you there? Hello. There he is. Hold on a second. Let me uh, let me uh, uh, put you on the panel here. Okay. All righty. You know, uh, what, uh, do you ever have these problems where you have to talk to some guy in India who doesn't know what the fuck he's doing? Oh, I would try and avoid that uh, at all costs. Well, normally I haven't had to call Files. I mean, I have to admit that for the most part, Files has been okay. And then today, at some point, I found that all my network drives went disappeared from the, my desktop, and I couldn't figure out why. And there, uh, something happened, I think. And then we had to reset, and then we had to reset the names. And oh, it's, and yeah, I, I couldn't deal with that. And all doing it with somebody who doesn't speak English, basically. Yeah, believe believe it or not, the the company I work for, as big as it is, Sherwin yeah. Williams Paints, all their accounts payable is basically outsourced to people that work for the company, but they don't do it here in the states. I mean, yeah, it's it's in Malaysia worldwide, and I uh, I'm like I work now in like uh, procurement you know purchasing so i uh order things and make you know po's and deal with vendors and all that and when there are po issues and whatnot or mm -hmm. vendor issues you always have to go through these people in fucking malaysia and of course they're 12 hours apart so you can never actually talk to anyone it's always by email and that's oh, a fucking mess really you know i mean <laughs> yeah i mean it's a 
it's a company that does you know 15 billion dollars a year or whatever in revenue and you know well you know you know here the problem that i have with with uh, uh and maybe i'm like an old fart saying this because this is now already maybe 20 years ago but there was a time when all the uh, all the uh, this customer support was being done from in most cases silicon valley you know and what you had working there were a bunch of nerds who knew how things worked. Now, this guy, yeah. I'm sure, doesn't know how things work. He's got a book there, and it says he can't get his thing. Okay, <laughs> here's how you do it. Okay. Uh, excuse me, I have to check with something. Yeah, he has to check with the book, right, to figure right. it out. Uh, ultimately, yeah. I could yeah. have solved this problem myself if I had... Known what to do. There's a thing called my FiOS on my iPad. I can go to it. I can go to my uh, Wi-Fi, and then I can reset the name and the password. So I yeah. could I could have done it myself. But uh, yeah, it's just and even some of those people are actually really smart, but the, they just can't communicate with you. Yeah, how you need to communicate. You know. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I always get all these emails. You know, in this broken English. You know, like. Please, ad, please advice, you know, and it's spelled advice. It's like, you, know, advice. you mean please advise, you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's just like, fuck it, you know what I mean? What can you do about it? Yeah. So anyways, I was having, you know, I was having this problem, and I just, I didn't want to have to sit here and do a show and worry about it because it wasn't working. And somehow, I don't know what happened, but something happened today where my service went out. And I lost all my uh, little, uh, uh, I have like a bunch of uh, network drives and so on. And the network drives disappeared on me. And so I've just put them back on and I didn't think about it until all of a sudden, before I went on the air, uh, just right after I went on the air, I tried to go to one of my Wi-Fi uh, stations and none of them were there. And so I, you know, all of a sudden, hello, Phil. I wonder what, hey, the, I, what the hell was happening, you know? And so I just took myself <laughs> off the air because I knew that I had to solve this problem. Otherwise, I was going to go crazy. So it's problem was solved. But it, and then he had me like get a get a paper clip and stick it in the, the hole in the back of the machine to reset it. <laughs> Okay, so uh, that's not a good idea. Sometimes no, 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 no. The the reset buttons usually yeah. take you can, you can use a, a ballpoint pen. I think no, would no, fit no, in no. There. I wasn't talking about damaging it. I was just sometimes hitting those reset buttons fucks up other stuff. Well, what it did yeah. is it reset. It it, 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 it I wasn't reading my Wi-Fi. Okay, I wasn't being able to get to my Wi-Fi system. Okay. So what this did is it reset the machine. Well, what it reset was the passwords as well, and the well, name and the name of the of of the uh, of the station. Okay, so uh, uh, th that we had to reset, and he reset it for me. But I could have done that myself. But next time I'll know better. You know. Uh, well, you know, everybody was concerned. <laughs> And uh, they thought that you were swept up in that ice raid in Mississippi today. Yeah, you know, yeah, the, right. uh, from your job at the packing plant. Yes, right, um, right. But anyway, here's the thing: I, I wonder about people who are at home. And when he says, uh, "Take a paper clip and put it in the back to reset it," but what if you're what if somebody who doesn't have a paper clip? And there are people the in this day. world who don't have. Do you have a paper clip uh, around the house, uh, uh, Josh? Yeah, I've got some. Oh, okay. Do you have any, Phil? Uh, I didn't the other day. I was trying to take my... Uh, I, have a <laughs> I have a gun that you have to... Uh, when you're taking it apart, you have to use a paper clip, put it through this little hole, and it holds it in a in a position, and, and the strength of the string, the spring. Yeah. So I, I couldn't find a paper clip anywhere. <laughs> I, I, I put it back together and... Wow. Well, yeah, well, I have a paper clip. I have a lot of paper clips, but if I didn't, what would I use? Well, I guess I guess I could use the pen. The pen would fit in there. But, you know, I mean, uh, I don't know where what happened. It just wiped out completely yeah. my Wi-Fi stations. Uh, there was some update I did this morning mm -hmm. on the, uh, you know, same machine as yours. Mm -hmm. And uh, my camera 
uh, I can't adjust any of the settings in the Logitech thing. It's just all the way over to the left, and uh, really, you know, I can't crop. I can't do anything. Yeah, I can't change the yeah. brightness. I also had to reset the camera here. Hold on a second. There we go. Uh, uh, you, you notice I got a haircut uh, today. Uh, oh, very nice. Uh, is that why you're not uh, sporting your cap? Well, no, I'm not sporting my cap because I wanted to get back on the air and I forgot to put it on. Yeah. So <laughs> that, 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 you know, caused a little problem. Uh, we do have some people who are watching right now, uh, 13 of them. Uh, in case you just tuned in, we were off for the first, at least the first hour of the show, if not more so. Well, but, you know, Ray was concerned. Patrick was concerned. Wait, now, Gosh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, what are you doing here? I thought you were going to go to a uh, photo club Yeah, tonight. I did. I did. And, I called uh, him in. Uh, the, uh, the part of uh, what I do, mm -hmm. uh, I was able to get through pretty quickly. And there was a little break, so I was able to put the equipment away. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have anything in projected, so I left. Yeah. Well, you know what the number one rule is in photo club. Uh, what goes in photo club stays in photo club. Don't mention photo club. <laughs> <laughs> yes, don't mention photo club. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but but uh, anyway. So, so, yeah, I got out of there early. Yeah, you know, this is getting to be a, like a three-day-a-week show, the way we're going with this damn thing, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, which, you know, I found when I did, when I went off for two nights because I was, like, really depressed because of the whole thing with the with the Honestly, urologist yeah. and so on uh i found when i came back everybody liked it more you know it was like they were all there tons of them you know everybody was raring to go maybe i should do this show like two days a week or something like that or maybe one day a week well, and you know you, you're people miss you yeah it's, well, it's, it's i mean it's nice to be maybe missed. It, uh Makes mm -hmm. a weekend in here or there or something like a Saturday night show or whatever. I remember you. Well, you you you, you mentioned to me were, do do a Saturday yeah. night show. Yeah, yeah they were yeah. pretty popular. I mean, I work every other weekend right, right now, but I mean, you know, the, if I were off a Saturday night, hell, I'd call. It'd be great. Yeah, yeah. Just extra here and there, mix it up or something. But well, I, Monday afternoon, like you used to. It, 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 well, yeah. I, you, you know, I mean, I I've, I've thought of a lot of things because I I don't know. Uh, if you I got want, different people on huh? the Monday or or during in the afternoon. Oh, in the afternoon you get different people. Yeah, I get. In fact, there's people that it's available to then, but it wouldn't be available mm -hmm. to like Josh. Wouldn't be available to him. Uh, yeah, sometimes in the well, see, I work a crazy schedule. I, I get days off during the week. Mm -hmm. when, you know when I have to work the weekend. So uh, sometimes I'm off all day. So you never know. No. Yeah. I'm, Trying to get my schedule to change by getting a, a different job in the company, but right now that's what I'm working. So the you other, never know. The other cluster fuck just surprise people and just come on whatever the fuck you want. The other cluster <laughs> fuck I'm dealing with is uh, uh, Albert was supposed to be here, he and his wife tonight. Oh, yeah. and then there was a thunderstorm in New York City, and the plane he was on uh, landed in Virginia, mm. and they had a choice. Take a flight out at 6 in the morning, if in fact that flight even goes, because who knows with the weather, or we'll, uh, we'll bus you up to New York. Uh, now, that's to be fun. now, to begin with, I didn't mm. hear from Albert any, you... any notion on the part of his airline that they were going to return his money to him. Tell him to take the train. <laughs> you know? Well, no, no, they were offered a bus. Oh. They were offered a bus. Because the train, I think there's a, a fast train. train. Oh, no, those trains yeah. are great. But anyway, so whatever time the bus gets into Manhattan, I'm going to get a call from him downstairs wanting to get in. So, <laughs> you know. Uh, uh, so it's, it's one of those clusterfuck nights. And I, I feel sorry for them. They're starting a little vacation for a week, and all of a sudden you wind up in Virginia. You know. Oh. <laughs> You know, hey, Rob Does he lives still live in New York? Yeah. Rob lives there, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, uh, he uh, lives in Florida, I think. Uh, oh, did Albert uh, move to uh, Florida? Uh, Albert lives in Florida now. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, I must have he, he lived, over my head some he, somewhere along the line. Yeah, he lives I didn't know he was still in New York. He yeah, he's, uh, he wants to get into Mar-a-Lago, but uh, you yeah. know, not let him in because he's a Democrat. You get a lot, uh, pretty good job down there or something. Uh, uh, no, no, he isn't, isn't he retired. He's re he's retired. 
kind of. Oh. You know, I mean, it, let's put it this way. In it's our business. A New Yorker ra- retired and moved to Florida. In, in, the, ra- in the radio thing. business, we're all. All he had to do was be Jewish. We're all <laughs> retired, and I think I could probably find myself a job if I wanted to take one at $35,000 a year, you know, which you is know, beginning to look good, actually, to tell you the truth, you know. At least it'll take Sup- care of my supplemental income. Take care of my dental bills or something like that. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, it's it's uh, there's there's no radio business anymore, you know, and uh, uh, it's all gone. See, here's what happens: the radio guys go, "Well, I'm I've I've left radio, but I'm going to start doing a podcast." <laughs> uh, you know what podcast means? I'm out of work in radio. <laughs> That's what podcast. I, I used to tease you when you were at Camel and say if you wouldn't take one of my requests for uh, for a song, I said mm-hmm. uh, my father will send you to a CB radio station in Cincinnati. Yeah, and you well, remember, you remember that? Well, this is actually this is a step down from CB podcast. Yeah. Well, what happened? Uh, his his uh, Josh his um, thing was that he wouldn't take any requests, and it was a real good reason because if he played something, it had to be on the playlist, and he had to pick from a pie. Well, I just I I just coined the expression. I don't take. Somebody called up and said, "Would you play such and such?" And I would go, uh, "I don't take no requests." And eventually, right. that right. it wound up being a billboard on a freeway, right? Uh, saying, uh, "I don't I take actually, requests." I had T-shirts made for you and uh, Susan oh, and, and myself, and, and, and the slogan was, "I don't take no requests." Requests, right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, so what? Uh, uh, what it was also is that uh, if he played a record, uh, they couldn't play it again for two hours. Oh. So no, that, the, wasn't, that wasn't the case. That wasn't well, really that's what the you case. told me. Uh, and and he didn't want to play anything that the jocks that would actually play music would be interested in playing. So he <laughs> always played stuff that. Well, we had a playlist. We had stuff at that stage. Yeah, I, I picked the playlist do, for you. I had yeah. a pie that was different colors on the pie. Yeah. And I had to pick albums that uh, were in that color you, you for know, that segment. What used to drive stations crazy that played music that I did shows on mm-hmm. was that I did not want to play music. You know, right. I wanted to not do this, not necessarily do a talk show, but do an entertainment show. People come mm-hmm. on, we joke, we have fun, we goof around. Oh, well, wait a minute, I have to go take a pee, let's play a record. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You know, Um and and so that was you know that was my uh, my uh, um, whole um, situation and I uh, you know I was I was pretty uh, uh, happy not playing records but yeah. the fact was they would then say well you got to play at least six records an hour okay so I play six records an hour then I well, went I only to, remember the Camel days well then I went know. to then when I went to another station I I made a deal. Uh, the quake where I said uh, uh, I have creative control over the program. That's part of what I want in my contract. And so that's what I had in my contract. And part of that creative control was I didn't feel like playing a fucking record. All right? Yeah. Or if I did, I'd play one. Right? Right. Uh, and what would happen is I would work at a radio station, and the name of the game with Alex Bennett was... Uh, Let's see how many records we can get him to play in an hour. <laughs> so, you know, they, if they wanted to penalize me because I did something wrong or something, they said, we want you to play 10 records an hour or whatever. <laughs> and I go, uh, okay. So one time they, they get, we, I was working at, I can't remember where I was. I think it was at the Quake. And um, they put some kind of thing on me, and it was in my contract that I didn't have to play records, but they said, we want you to play, oh, I know, it was at Live 105, where I didn't have that in my contract, okay? And they said, as a punitive thing, we want you to play 10 records an hour. So I said, you want me to play So they didn't want any commercials? No. so here's what I did. <laughs> here's what I did. Yeah. We were in stereo. So what I did was I did my talk, which went on for the whole hour, on one channel and played the music on the other. 
And I said, if you want to yeah. hear the show without music, just just t turn your turn your, it to your, the left. <laughs> you, you know, your little remember you used to have a thing where you could yeah. like do the yeah, balance, balance, right? Balance control. And if you balanced it, there there I was, and there was no music. You put it on the other side, there was music. Well, they went crazy over that one. <laughs> that was that was smart. That, I, that, you know. dro that drove them nuts. I said, "Well, that will teach you your lesson." And they said, "We still want you to play ten records an hour." So when I did one morning, is I said, "I will become the most music radio station in the mornings in New in San Francisco, <laughs> playing the most music of any station." And so what I did is I I did a lot of research. And I found as many records as I could, songs, and there are quite a few of them that were under a minute long. You know, there were uh, people yeah. like the Bonzo Dog Band did like one minute things, and, uh, 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 you know, um, uh, I'm trying to remember who else. And, and, and so we had songs that were one minute or a minute and a half long. And so I played them back to back for an hour. I said, we're going to play music back to back for the next hour, except for commercial breaks. And in the hour, I managed to play 35 records. <laughs> and then from then on, I never played another record again, but I called myself your More Music Morning Show. We play the yeah. most music of any station in San Francisco. And I was right. So Yeah. That's Wasn't there two around. versions of Inagata De Vida? One that you could go to the bathroom for a long time. Oh, Inagata De Vida went on forever. There were there were what we call bathroom break records. In the early yeah. days, it was um, uh, Marty Robbins' El Paso. <laughs> Oddly enough, I <laughs> <laughs> take a shot. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, and you would put on El Paso because El Paso was four and a half minutes long, and it was long enough to yeah. take a pee. But then, as not at our age, <laughs> years went on. You maybe just wanted to, you know, at three o'clock in the morning, fuck some woman in your studio, so you'd put on Alice's Restaurant, which was twenty-eight minutes, you know, <laughs> uh, or in a God of Devita, which I think was I don't know, something. twenty-two, twenty-two I, minutes. I think there was an minutes. eleven or a nine and a twenty-two. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. I kind of like doing the show this way because it's like we're doing it for those people who actually took the trouble to try and check <laughs> back to see if we were going to get back on. Well, yeah. uh, Josh was uh, watching yeah, out waiting. and he says, you know, uh, and says, I was coming on. I was really tired and then I got him all invigorated with this. But anyway, so I, I think I have all my, all my networks now. Uh, yeah. Yep. There it is. They come right up. Good. Son of a bitch. Well, I, at least I learned how to do it. Yeah. As my so what was it, an update on the Apple? or No, no, no. This was Something happened at Fios. And I, oh. and, and, and my, uh, I have two Wi-Fi's. One is uh, Bolo Mills, and the other mm -hmm. one is Bolo Mills <laughs> Booster. Uh, Bolo Mills uh, 5G. Uh, oh, there's a... Uh, we're we getting. That's right. Hello. Yeah, we're Hello. Getting, yeah, we're getting. I'll turn off the sound. I'll turn it uh, off. Oh, okay. All right. Um, um, but uh, uh, what was it? Uh, it was um, what's the thing I was going to say? Uh, uh, oh, so it was Bolo Mills, and there's Bolo Mills 5G, and those weren't coming up. Okay. Uh, and um, I couldn't figure out why they weren't coming up. And apparently, they weren't coming up because I think at some point, the system, the FIO system, rebooted my, um, let me see here. I'm trying to look for Charlie here. Come on. Give me Charlie. Give me Charlie. Uh, hold on a second. Wait a minute. Hold on. It's Charlie. Wait a minute. Here we go. Let's see here. Charlie, Charlie Wallace. There we go. Charles Wallace, actually, if you want to be... Uh, uh, and let me turn that one off because that's a double of Charles Wallace. And uh, let me see here. Let me, uh, there we go. Wait a minute. No, that's the wrong one. This is the one I want. There we go. Um, hi, Charlie. Hi. Uh, uh, what was I saying? What was I talking about? Uh, you were talking about your two different uh, oh, oh, yeah, Wi-Fi. Yeah, 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 yeah. So those Wi-Fis were not coming up. But I think what was coming up were the two that it it defaulted to, okay? Which was your neighbors? Yeah, and, and that's why I couldn't find it. 
And then this guy yeah. found it after I reset it. And, and uh, those, it, it took whatever I had as my Wi-Fi's and completely wiped them out. So I think that was something over at Fios. And I'm up for my, uh, I'm through with my two-year deal with Fios. Oh, now they're going to raise the price? Well, they could raise the price, but they probably don't do that. What I think they probably do, if I'm not mistaken, is what they will say to me is, uh, hey, Alex, uh, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, we'll give you the same deal over again if you go for another two years. Maybe you get a better deal. Or I'm going to say yeah. to them, hey, you know, there's always Spectrum down the street here, and they'll give me a good deal, uh, and, uh, you know, I just won't, won't have to stay with you. But I prefer to stay with you since you're here, and I'm sure they'll make me a deal. I mean, yeah, I, they'll I'll give you some more networks e or something. Either that I'll say for 24 hours, get rid of my service, and then put it, turn it back on and give me the new deal. <laughs> you <know>? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, either, I'm down either, eight pounds. You, well, you're not down eight pounds. It's all water weight loss. It may be water weight, but my jeans fit better. No, my, it's uh, your imagination. Ah, it's, it's, it's true. It even, you know, it's uh, water weight. Hey, if I if I lose any more, I'll look like Ray. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, as I said last night, everybody will say, hey, how does Phil look thin? And the answer will be fat. So... Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I found a passport that had one of my uh, it had a photograph of me when I was 18, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I I don't know what I did with it. It's, it's around here somewhere. I had an afro. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> yeah. Now, let me see if I can. Where, where do I have? Uh, do I have? My, where's my? Where's my? Uh, let me get my uh, my my pictures here. Where are my pictures? There they are. Uh, I, I have go, like if, 25 if, years of pictures over at my ex-wife's house. I, I don't have anything from. Oh know. really? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, I never well, took them. Actually, I'm going to have to go back too far, I think, to get to where I need to go. Here we go towards the top. Here, let's go there. Uh, here we go. Um, well, here's a picture of me playing an accordion. <laughs> That's, okay. That's actually that's a Photoshop thing I did. But wait a minute, where where is that? Where are those pictures of me? Uh, my, my favorite picture is a picture of me at uh, at WYND in Chicago, and I look like a game show host. Uh, well, that no, that's not it. That's not it. That's not. Is that it. your Facebook one? Huh? Is that the one you have on Facebook? Yeah, here, uh, here, here, here. This is the picture, folks. Look at that. Oh, yeah. All oh, right. Huh? How's that? It looks like Jerry Lewis. It, it, oh, it, 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 but doesn't it look like I should be having a game show? Isn't that, yep. isn't that a game show oh. photo? Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. I think uh, INS will pick you up. Mm hmm? INS will pick you up. You, yeah. you look like uh, oh. you've invaded uh, from a, across the border. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, anyway, that's fine. That's my favorite photo. Here's me with Grace Slick in a tuxedo. Look at that. Oh. That that? Very cool. Is she still, she's dead, isn't she? I don't know. I don't think so. No? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I just assume that everybody I know is dead. Okay. Hey, Siri, is Grace Slick dead? Grace Slick was born October 30th, 1939, and is 79 years old. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. She's the same age as me. She lives in Hill yeah. Valley. Gee, you know something? Lives in Hill Valley. All my life I wanted to fuck her, and now I probably can. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. October 30th is her birthday. Yeah. Um, she went to the University of Miami. Wow, she's 79, huh? She's still alive. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's one of the ones you can put on your, uh, on your what, what's that list they do every year where you predict who's going to die? Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she'll probably live. You know, she she was never overweight. You know, she 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 stopped singing because um, she doesn't think old people should sing rock and roll. I heard her say that. Really? <laughs> yeah. You know, she might be right. I mean, I think it's kind of I don't know. Are the Rolling Stones just getting a little embarrassing? 
kind yeah. of what's his name? Uh, who, who's who's the one that uh, of the Stones that looks like he's pickled? Uh, Keith Richards. Keith, Keith Richards. Richards. He hasn't changed. Well, actually, what's happened is that might be the picture. Of well, I, it could very well be that heroin is a preservative. <laughs> you know, is is what is possible. Uh, but he actually, oddly enough, looks healthier today than Mick Jagger does. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he, but he, you know, he's he looks he's weathered. You know, he's like a fine Moroccan wallet. You know, <laughs> yeah. fine uh, Corinthian leather. <laughs> yeah. Hey, boss, it's the plane. Uh, yeah. But did, did Grace Lick say that about uh, people her age shouldn't be singing rock and roll? I think maybe she's right. I don't know. You know. Um, uh, I heard her say that to Ron Owens about ten years ago. Really? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, probably. Uh, and she was actually making fun of Mick Jagger when she did it. Well, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, it got, you know, they came out with the Steel Wheels uh, tour. Remember that years ago, the Steel Wheels tour? And I, I said, it really should be the Steel Walker tour. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, it, 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 I, but I'll tell you, it's, it's a... Uh, what can I call it? It's a miracle of modern science, okay, that Keith Richards is still alive. You know, that somehow between one thing or another, they've managed to keep him alive. And he's clean now. But, you know, he, he can get clean, but that ain't going to do away with the, you know, the road weariness, as it were. Yeah. But uh, yeah, One New Year's Day, I think, I had... Uh, brunch or breakfast at uh, this uh, hotel in Oakland uh, uh, starts with a C, the Claremont. Claremont. And Keith Richards was at the next table. Mm -hmm. I didn't say anything to him and I didn't really recognize him because I didn't. You know, but I, I saw him and I, you know, I knew, you know, I put two and two together afterwards and that was Keith Richards. And he looked dead there. Yeah, but I can top you. Yeah. I was having dinner one night, and I can't remember where the restaurant was. And who was eating at the table next to me? Jackie Kennedy. Wow. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. And, wow. and I can't remember who I was with, but he, he said to me, he said, why don't you go over and tell her how much you liked your pictures in Hustler? Yeah. Remember those pictures? Remember those pictures? Remember those pictures? No. <laughs> well, no, they were pictures of her on Aristotle and not, not uh, Aristotle and Nassus's yacht. Uh-huh. Uh, naked. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, sunbathing. I mean, come on, she's on a boat, you know. And yeah. She's out in the Mediterranean. You get on a full tan, right? Wow, there was no uh, drones she, then. And 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 uh, somebody with a huge telephoto, telephoto lens. lens from like he was over like on 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 Mykonos, huh? Mykonos or somewhere <laughs> else, you know. Uh, uh, took a picture, took some pictures, and sold them to Larry Flint, who then published them in Hustler. You know, I in, you live in the Bay Area, you see a lot of people that are are famous, and I never interrupt someone's lunch to say something to them or their dinner. Mm -hmm. uh, I just leave them alone, don't say a word. Yeah, you know? yeah, uh, yes. Uh, 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 One time, I was at SFO waiting for my skis, and Alice Cooper was standing literally right next to me, waiting for his golf clubs, and uh, I'm like, "Shit, it's Alice Cooper." <laughs> I didn't say anything. I yeah. wanted to. <laughs> uh, he's tiny. He's tiny. He's like yeah, five four or something. Well, I used to know Alice. There's like nothing to the yeah. guy. <laughs> I knew Alice years ago, and I, I had a falling out with him because I had a falling out with his manager, and uh, you know. But anyway, uh, um, but he's a, was a nice guy, very nice guy. Um, but. Um, uh, <laughs> Well, my favorite, my favorite thing that ever happened to me is, and embarrassing at, at, a, at a restaurant, was uh, oh. Huey Lewis. Oh. Uh, I had been kidding Huey Lewis on the air constantly <laughs> by saying every time anybody would mention Huey Lewis, I would say, you know, he lived in the Bay Area. I said, yeah. uh, you know, that's a wig, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
So didn't anytime Gonzo anybody, open and, and, for him? Uh, huh? Didn't Gonzo open for he him? Might have, yeah. But well, the, uh, but anyway, uh, uh, it, it constantly sure. constantly saying to me, uh, you know, um, I constantly would say when somebody would mention uh, Huey Lewis, oh yeah, that's yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a skull cap, it's a it's a wig. <laughs> So now one, hey, night, I like Huey Lewis. one night I'm at dinner and I can't remember the restaurant in Marin County and I'm at this restaurant and I look over and at a table about two tables away from me is Huey. <laughs> and I, I look at him and he looks at me and the next thing he does is he takes his hand, <laughs> grabs his hair and pulls on it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. He, uh, he's a very smart guy. If I remember, I thought he went to Harvard. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you? Remember? I think he got an MA at Harvard. Yeah, yeah you, Ray. And if I remember right, uh, yeah, I swear I the dude's uh, roommate was Al Gore. Yeah. yeah. Can I share my Huey Lewis, Lewis story? You're, you're well, a Huey Lewis story. I have, a Huey, I have I have one. Yeah. You have a Huey he, Lewis story? I, I do. I was at an A's game and he was singing the the Star Spangled Banner, and uh, like one of the innings, I. I went to go to the restroom, and he comes out of the box seats just as I'm passing by. And he walks right next to me with his bodyguards. We go into the little toilet there in the trough, and it was me and Huey next to each other, <laughs> peeing in the trough. Hmm. He's like, how's it going, man? I'm fine, man. What's going on? Great no, job tonight. It, it's terrible when somebody <laughs> recognizes you in, in a, 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 you're in a urinal, and somebody comes up next to you, and they turn around and go, you're Alex Bennett, aren't you? And they keep, start peeing on you. <laughs> I and, didn't do that. He talked to me first. <laughs> but, um, uh, uh, yeah, he, uh, you, he was a, a, a nice guy from what I understand. I didn't. That well, but he we, he knew what I looked like, and I knew what he looked like, and it was a very funny moment. And we both laughed. Um, so uh, there's nothing more embarrassing than uh, coming up against somebody that you've been putting down on the radio <laughs> because you don't have to ever meet up with them, so you can kid about them, and then all of a sudden you're face to face with them. And and maybe they don't have the same sense of humor you do. You know you were doing it in good fun, <laughs> you know. You ever uh, you ever meet Jackson Brown? No. 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 Uh, Just curious. No. I could tell I'm you. A big st fan. He's still alive, isn't he? Love his politics. Is he still alive? He's going to be. Yeah, he's going to be. Oh yeah, he's touring. in August. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. He's, if he's, he's still, still alive, touring, I, I, uh, I, I I tell yeah. you I tell you a story about. Jackson Brown, but unfortunately he's still alive and I don't want to get sued. So, you know, since he probably has more money than I do at the present time, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he still tours and everything. He's uh, he's made quite a lot. Um, he's, he's been... You know, there was a whole you know, group of... There was, uh, were a whole group of musicians that I, I just never got with, okay? Jackson Brown was one of them. I know he was good and he was fine. I know people liked him and thought he was terrific, but I couldn't see why. You know, it just never, yeah. it never appealed to me. I don't know why. Yeah, right. Music is a personal taste. Another I mean, one who know. appealed, uh, uh, I felt about that way, was Joni Mitchell. I could never see why anybody would want to listen yeah. to Joni Mitchell. I agree with you on that. You know? Uh, right. I never got Joni Mitchell, but she was huge. But going back to Huey right. Lewis, here's the intro. Does everybody know who we're talking about when we're saying Huey Lewis? Okay, all right. Yeah. Uh, how many hits did that guy have? <laughs> he had a string of maybe ten hits in a row. I mean, he could yeah. do no wrong. Right. right? Um, uh, he hit after hit after hit after hit, and all of a sudden one day, nothing. Just stop. Didn't he get sick or lose his voice or no, something? No, 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 no. Who am I thinking? I of think that? he moved to France for a long time. No, but what and happened? He, and then uh, he came back and wrote a musical on Broadway. Yeah, but I would, I would love to ask you. He also appeared on Broadway, I think, in uh, one of the versions of uh, what's that that show? Uh, oh boy, but Bob Fosse uh, did the choreography. Cabaret. For, cabaret. He, it, was it cabaret? I think he did. Uh, he did a couple of months in cabaret here in New York. Yeah. I think so, yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, he, um, 
he had hit after hit after hit, and all of a sudden he stopped having them. And it, it could be that one day he just said, I got enough money, I don't need to keep doing this. You know? Right. I mean, there are people who were in the business. My father used to tell me legendarily about this musician. His name was Kay Kaiser. Kay Kaiser was, in his day, a very popular dance band. Uh, and then he had a t radio show called Kay Kaiser's College of Musical Knowledge, with uh, the college was with a K. And uh, my father told me that the thing he always appreciated about Kay Kaiser was Kay Kaiser said, I'm going to keep working until I make a million dollars. And in those days, I guess a million dollars was a lot of money. And he said, the day he made the million dollars, guess what? Out of the business. Just quit. So it could be, you know, that you, we said, I got enough money. I can take care of myself for the rest of my life. I can do things when I want to do them. And just uh, didn't have any more hits because he had one fucking hit after another. You, he didn't ever, it was nonstop. He has an inner ear disorder uh, called men menorrhage disease. And uh, that's something lately. Yeah, right. he, he's, uh, he's got uh, hearing loss. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And it's yeah, an inner it ear was. disorder, and uh, uh, well, so that happens. Anyway. That happens to a lot of uh, that happens to a lot of rock people. It happened to Peter Townsend, who well, uh, yeah, you know, you're yeah. in front of those speakers, yeah. uh, you, you know. In and, fact, in fact, uh, it happened to Peter Townsend so badly that at a certain point, uh, they weren't going to disband the band, uh, but they were going to change the name from the Who to the What. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my best jokes. And that's mine. Yeah, so he, he that's mine. Nobody wrote that one for me. I didn't steal that from no comic. That's my joke. <laughs> you know. uh, and I can't figure out why I thought it up and somebody didn't beat me to it. You know? Um, well, somebody will steal it. Yeah. Yeah. But then Peter Townsend had all that stuff with uh, child porn and things like that, but he said he was researching it or something. And of course, yeah. No, no, no but he, he didn't, didn't get, uh, he got away. With yeah, let's, let's, let's look at some, uh, you know, prepubescent uh, vulva. Hmm, that's good research. Yeah. yeah. He's got to write a research paper. Uh, yes. just yeah. hadn't got published I have yet. to check yeah. out how tiny a vulva Here. can be. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's the one I don't understand. I, these guys who, you know, do th the thing, uh, 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 you know, go for kids, children. I just, I just don't understand it. You know, there's nuts for everything. You know. Yeah, but I don't, I don't, I don't get what the. Well, I guess it's because it's not my thing. You know, you know. I, at my age, somebody under thirty isn't attractive to me. Yeah. <laughs> You know, they they seem like kids. Uh, I would say I would agree with you. You know, I mean, if some woman were 21 and came on to me, I don't think I'd be interested. I just yeah. wouldn't be, you know. Um, but, uh, it, 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 but that's not going to happen, so why should I even <laughs> postulate You can always you pretend. Know. <laughs> you know, so. At my age, it now takes me all night to do what I used to be able to do all night. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a, you know. Hey, you know, we're almost running out. We, we've got about five more minutes here. And we haven't mentioned the T word all night. You know. Don't start now. Yeah, fuck it. Well, can I just mention one thing I thought was hilarious today? Was how this guy managed to sidestep having to bump into a Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, he took the helicopter to the hotel, and he took the helicopter to get somewhere else, and he was, well, you know, avoiding people. Uh, you know, uh, uh, El Paso is a uh, very blue town, and the uh, uh, the, uh, the congressperson from that area didn't want him to come down. Oh. Uh, the mayor didn't want him to come down, so he did anyway and what he did was he just visited the hospital he visited the first responders and that was that yeah yeah but you i know, mean they, but, they they said he wasn't welcome so you know he didn't but he, uh, he didn't make a big deal out of it uh, yeah but i think he was also avoiding it too i i think they had a plan of how 
they would be able to sidestep it. And the, the answer was was helicopters, basically. Yeah, but yeah. if if they would have said, "Hey, you know, we really want you to come down. We want an appearance. We want your support." I'm sure he would have. But they said, "We don't want you there." So he respected that. Well, you know, what I'll, I'll tell you what I would have done uh, to begin with, uh, and what most presidents do in situations like that. They don't go down this soon after the event. But they, if he didn't, well, wait a minute, let me say he didn't go down well, soon enough. Uh, no, uh, uh, I believe Obama had a situation in which uh, he waited a couple of weeks before doing it because he right. didn't want it to seem politically <laughs> motivated, number one. And secondly, he felt that they needed their own healing time without him coming into town and and uh, and fucking up traffic, for instance, you know. Uh, and and so some presidents have in the past waited a few weeks before doing it. This was like what? It happened last weekend. You can't win, you know. It doesn't matter what he does, and even previous presidents, uh, the opposite side will always. Uh, say he didn't oh, do it no, soon no, enough. No, look, I grant you that, but that's yeah. not a reason for you to go down this fast. I mean, what you say is those people need a few days, need to heal, they need to have their services and things like that, and then I will come by and try and be a healing force. Well, he had a bunch of uh, paper towels left over from Puerto <laughs> yes, Rico. Yes, right, that he <laughs> threw out <laughs> to the people in El Paso. You know, all those paper towels from Puerto Rico, yeah. uh, the governor sold them. Did he, he really? He took them back from the people he threw them to and said, hey, these are presidential towels, and, and, he, and he sold them and pocketed yeah. the money. That well, governor they really had loved. Had to resign. That, that well, governor they really loved, don't they? Yeah. 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 Well, Trump uh, did say he was a crooked, uh, crooked dude. He was, he was a crooked dude, you know. Yeah. yeah. But then again, uh, you know, so it was lot, timing. Well, it, in in a lot of countries uh, of of a third world nature, although I don't know that we can consider Puerto Rico third world, but can uh, now. But they're usually yeah. wow. uh, corruption is always very rife in countries uh, yeah. that don't have the resources. Let's say. Uh, now, do you like what he did to Venezuela, the Maduro campaign, by freezing all the, his funds and, uh, you know, hoping that uh, if he did that, Maduro it, it, would take what he's stolen it, it, and leave? Well, there's a problem with that. And the problem is, who's in power right now? Maduro. Yeah, so it didn't yeah. work, did it? Yeah, but if he can't get any money and, uh, and they're going to sanction anybody that gives him, uh, you know, trades with him, uh, well, you know, know what happens when out. you do that, though? The only problem with that that I have against that is that really, in the end, you're hurting the people. Because a lot of times yeah. when you're freezing well, funds and things like that, you're hurting the people. But, and and but, who was Maduro taking it out on? He wasn't giving them medical he supplies. He wasn't giving yeah. them food. He wasn't right. giving them water. You know, yeah. so better you, you know, you kind of have to think about what you're doing when you do sanctions against people. I'll yeah. tell you quickly who got really smart are the Chinese. Um, oh, yeah. Now they're paying for the no, tariffs, you know. No, no, no. Because no. they lowered the value of their currency. No, no, no. no, but so no, they're, no, you're wrong, Phil. Here's what happened. They're so lowering they can the compete. No, it's so they can compete. Let's say you go in, you buy a air conditioner for... Uh, uh, there's one for $200 and it's from China and there's one for $250 in the United States you're going to buy the one from China now with the tariffs that air conditioner is now going to go up to $250 now you probably maybe buy the American so what do the Chinese do they lower their currency so the price goes back down to 200 right but <laughs> you know that means that the Chinese are paying for the tariffs because if you lower the currency, then we're paying less for Chinese products, no. and it oh, and it uh, defeats the it defeats the tariff. But basically, they're getting less money because yeah. they're not getting yeah. dollars at the same. And that's rate. the most politics we've but, talked about tonight. Okay, that's it. I'm not going to even say what I was. Gonna what say were you going to say? Say quickly. They right. have their own exchange, and they leveraged one against the other. Yeah, the Chinese China. have. Do you know when they can establish the rates on their money? Yeah. They go to the World at, Bank? At midnight, every night, if they want yeah, exactly. to. Exactly. We're here in the United States. We have to go through a whole process and so on. Anyway, hey, listen, <laughs> this has actually been fun. Maybe I should do a short <laughs> show like this, you know? Uh, we, we get absolutely nothing done. We talk about pranks we pulled on, uh, on, on rock stars. <laughs> 
And, uh, you know, uh, it's been fun. Hey, listen, thank you so much, Josh. I thank you. You were the first one to call like you were paying attention. Uh, I was. And, and, and Phil was, I think, checking in every now and then to see if I ever got up. No, Josh told me. And you, you f- uh, sent me a text, and I couldn't text you back because I was on the phone to fucking oh. Fios. We've been pretty yeah. good. I have to give. Well, them your that. your mishpuka. Everybody wanted to know what's going on with Alex, and yeah. so I said, "Oh, I died of the prostate cancer." Ray, thank <laughs> you so much. Charlie, thank you so much. Uh, I, I, and what I want you all to do is to give a big wave goodbye, and I will wave back at you, and that's it. Okay. Well, that was a short show. And uh, I think uh, it probably it was more enjoyable than when we do a long show. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, Jack Bishop is next. He's here with the uh, intersection uh, over most of the same station. Uh, I will be back again tomorrow night after Damian Chaplin does the exchange uh, on uh, at 9.30. I'll be here at 10. Okay, Eastern Daylight Time, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, see her, tell her I love her. Okay, bye.